What is going on everybody? My name's Bear Ridge. Welcome back to another formation review on the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing another one of Air Japes' formations. It is the 4141 which I've been watching him use on stream and to a great deal of success. This formation um, is not your usual type of formation. It is designed for a target man striker, someone like Lewandowski, Harry Kane, or Luis Suarez. I had a lot of fun using this formation myself, uh, very different to anything else that I've used this year. And uh, the main thing that we want to have on this game is fun. That's obviously the reason that we play it. We play it for our own enjoyment. And so I recommend trying this out maybe for like your first five games of weekend league or something or just jump into division rivals and give it a go because i seriously think this is a brilliant formation and that you're missing out if you don't try it so just give it a go and uh, we'll get into the custom tactics and the player instructions and i'll be able to explain to you how it works and uh, what you want to be trying to achieve in game okay so here we are on the custom tactics you'll notice first of all we'll start with the defensive style we have press after possession loss um the width is five and the depth is 10. now the defensive style coupled with the high depth is a staple of air japes's play style this year if you remember the 4332 which we did earlier on in the year he used the same two components in order to create a very high pressing formation the high depth is a way of trapping your opponents in their half dominating them and winning the ball back quickly people this year are too comfortable when it comes to passing the ball out from the back they're happy to take their time and build up slowly and so what this does is it causes them to rush and make passes they wouldn't necessarily want to make and ultimately make mistakes and give up the ball. And what this does is it leads to effectively you getting a free goal. If I play this example on the screen for you now, you can see I'm on the attack. I'm building up quickly. I'm on the I'm on a little bit of a counter. I play a sloppy through ball with Verratti. He picks it up with Varane nice and easy. He passes it out. Verratti, because he's got those seven seconds to press, immediately comes in, wins the ball plays a through ball straight into Promes, and it's an easy goal for me. And that's just one example. Over a 30-game weekend, I'm pretty sure I picked up four or five goals very similar to that. Um, goals that if I was playing a passive play style, if I was on drop back, um, if I was on like four depth, I wouldn't have those opportunities. My players would be too busy running back trying to get into position. Instead, because your opponent is not expecting that, you pounce, you win the ball, you score goals. And it's a lot of fun to play in such an aggressive manner. The other advantage of this is if, like myself, you're not necessarily the most clinical of FIFA players, I definitely squander a lot of chances. Um, this gives you more chances. Um, not as many as the 3-1-4-2 uh, that we looked at before, but it gives you a, a lot more than if you're playing this passive, slow build-up style. Um, I definitely have a lot more shots. I have a lot more possession. And uh, yeah, it, it's good for creating lots of opportunities. Now, if we move on to the offensive, and I know that the defensive was already very attacking minded anyway, but um, in the offense, we have an offensive style of long ball. We have a width of six. Players into the box are two. And then corners and free kicks are also two. So if I explain the thought process behind these decisions the long ball and the width is designed to send the left mid and the right mid wide and stretch the pitch give us passing options out in those wide areas um, this will make a lot more sense uh, when we go to the custom tactics obviously the unusual one is the players in the box with it being on two that is extremely low in comparison to what a lot of other people use. But there is method to the madness. If you have a look at the animation on the right, you can see the ball being crossed in. There's only one person making a run into the middle. If we up it to three, you can see then there's two people running into the middle. We don't want that. We're trying to create a target man formation. So by having it on two, 
we only have our striker getting into the box for crosses and passing options. Now, the way that we create this target man, if we move over to the instructions, is we have the striker on stay central and get in behind. They're on stay central because we want them to be the pinnacle of the attack, the player that we're aiming for. We don't want them running off to the side. We want them to be in the box. We want the striker on get in behind um, because we want them to stretch the back line as much as possible and create space and room for the centre mids to cruise into that our opponent's centre backs are vacating by chasing down your striker. Now, the central mids are on get forward. And as I said, they're there to support, but we don't want them getting into the box. So by having on two, it basically makes them run forward, but they stay on the very edge of the area um, waiting for the ball to play the clinical pass into the striker, or they can take a finesse shot from the edge of the area. The left mid and the right mid are on comeback on defense, cut inside and get in behind. The benefit of having your wingers on comeback on defense is that when you play someone who has a slow build up style, your wingers will prevent their wide players creating a mismatch. And so effectively you double up on the wings. Otherwise, players with high work rates sit up by the midfield, leaving lots of easy possession opportunities. The supporting runs are also then on getting behind because we want them to make runs down the wing, obviously. It's a good place to pass the ball. It's a good place to throw ball at and create opportunities from. And then we want them to have uh, cut inside so that again, they sort of create an overload on the edge of the area um, and opportunities. They will make runs in, but um, a lot fewer. And that's the point is that we want mainly our striker to be the one that are taking the opportunities. The CDM is on stay back whilst attacking and cover center. They effectively sit just in front of the back line um, and just give a little bit of extra support. But they're also really good for building up the play with. Um, so they need to be someone that is uh, good at passing because they're great for using the uh, R1X, the uh, driven passes. Um, into your left mid, your right mids, and your centre mids. Japes used Philip Lahm uh, in this position. I used uh, Foot Freeze Marquinhos, and I, I've also tried out uh, Kante in this position as well. I think all three would be perfect for this role. Um, find that you don't need cut passing lanes or man mark in this formation. Uh, we do want them literally to sit in front of the back two. And then the fullbacks are on stay back whilst attacking and inverted. We want to prevent them making runs forward as best as possible. But um, obviously that doesn't always work. They will still make runs forward. And so what we would then want them to do is cut inside so that they then support the CDM. And you can sort of end up with like a 2-3-4-1 um, in the midfield. And so... You do have a little bit of issues in the wide areas, but they do get back quite quickly. We don't want them on overlap because with having the left mid and the right mid on cut inside, um, they then see the AI sees that that gap and goes, ah, oh, I'm going to run into that wide area, even if you're on stage mark whilst attacking. So uh, we want to prevent them pushing up the field as much as possible. I'll very quickly talk about the sort of players that you want to use in each position if you want to look to adapt your current team to suit this formation. Goalkeeper, use whoever you like the most, whoever you're comfortable with, whoever gets you chemistry. For your centre-backs, you want them to be as pacey as possible. Japes used Cannavaro and Van Dijk. So we had one short and fast and one tall and strong and bulky center back to win back that ball quickly but if they got in behind Cannavaro could chase down the ball uh, I used Koscielny and uh, Kunde and they worked pretty well as a partnership as well um, so you can probably get away if you if you play with Varane and Gomez you're probably fine um, but try and experiment and use somebody different um, for your left back and your right back you want players that are good on the ball um, Kleiber worked really well on the right. Uh, Tavanier will work really well there as well. Uh, on the left, um, I think I, I used Mendy and he was really good. Obviously, um, he is really good on this game. Uh, Acuna would work really, really nicely in this formation. 
Um, so those are the sort of players you want to look for uh, in the CDM position. Like I said, you want somebody that is a good passer. So look for Lam, Marquinhos, Kante. Those sort of players will be fine. De Jong as well would be a good one. For your left mid and your right mid, you very want to use wingers. Players that are pacey, have good passing, good crossing, but also have uh, decent uh, finesse shots. So um, I used Ian Robin on the right. I've also used Salah and Team of the Year Messi on the right. And uh, they were obviously excellent on the left. I used Promes, Road to the Final. Um, and I think Japes uses Foot Freeze, Gnabry, um, those sort of players. Again, just kind inside and finessing it. And then the centre mids, they are effectively cams. So you want them to be more attacking focused if possible. I use Auer and uh, Verratti. They were both fantastic for me. Japes uses Ronaldinho and Felipe Anderson. Um, he basically said he didn't find that work rates were an issue. Um, I ended up using players that had decent work rates. So I haven't tried it with players that have bad work rates, but he said that they don't seem to matter for him. So you can use the two attacking players that you think are the nicest in there. I also uh, was bringing off Felix and uh, Dos Santos into the center mid positions. Um, and they both worked really nicely for me there as well. And then the last position, the striker, um, you want them to be a target man. Your Lewandowski, your Luis Suarez, your Harry Kane. That's the sort of player that you want the pinnacle of your team to be someone that is a clinical finisher. They don't have to be pacey in this formation. They don't have to have outstanding agility. You just need somebody that, given the opportunity, he is going to whack it in the net 100% of the time. So there you go. That is how you set up Air Japes' 4-1-4-1. Fantastic formation. Really fun to use. I 100% recommend that you try it out. If you have any questions on how to set up your team or how to use the formation, feel free to comment down below. I will reply to every single comment. So you don't have to worry about being ignored. But this is where we're going to end this video. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Bearridge and I'll catch you all next time.